The man played defense when he needed to down low in the paint. The man was getting boards for you, securing things, and the man was hitting big shots. Big Perm is here to make a statement. Yeah, we talk a lot. You know, we talked about power forwards a lot, and kind of how this tournament is huge for people's draft stock. Right? What's going on, Vinny? We're here with Vincent Valerio, aka Big Perm. We in this home in Staten Island. What's the word? No, man, it's crazy being back. I don't come back as uh, you know as often as I used to. My mom moved down to South Carolina, so every time I come here, it's just like like you said when you came in. There's a lot of energy in this house. It's, it's kind of surreal being here sometimes. Yeah, I'm from, uh, it's, it's called Oakwood, more specifically historic Richmond Town. It's kind of like a little neighborhood tucked in the middle of Staten Island, not a lot of people know, but, um, you know, it's kind of weird, like, thinking back, like, growing up here. I don't tell a lot of people I'm from Staten Island. I guess it kind of has, like, a little bit of a negative connotation, but, you know, it's where I, it's where all my formative years were. I went to school right down the block here at St. Patrick's, and, um, you know, it definitely had its positives and its negatives. Like, you know, I do feel like I was a little bit sheltered by growing up here in this area. I look back and like, you know, I, was, I had a pretty rough childhood, but there are bright moments when I come here and think about like times like playing with my dad in the in the kitchen area here and like dressing up in costumes and stuff. We used to do like fake wrestling events and stuff like that. And you know, my dad was a very creative guy and I feel, kind of feel like that's where I got my creative side from. I'm still, I still feel like a kid, even though I'm 33, I'm about to say I'm a kid from Staten Island who's got dreams to like change the world. That's just how I've always felt. Like since I was young, I've always been into like, being different, always been a little weird, you know, people always see me as weird, but I realized that was just because I always looked at things differently from where I from where I came from, you know, and uh, like I said, just always been my thing, tell my mom, like, I don't know what exactly I'm going to do, I've kind of found a little bit now, but even when I was 12, 13 years old, I was like, I'm going to change this world somehow, like, I'm going to leave my imprint on this world, and it's kind of crazy to say that stuff without really knowing what it's going to be, you know, at one point in my life, I thought I was going to be a doctor, another point, I was a lawyer, gamer, you know, now a teacher. I still don't know where that, that you know where my story ends, but it's it's definitely it's definitely going somewhere. I think one of my big inspirations though was my mom. Like I talked a little bit about her before, but you know my dad wasn't the easiest guy to get along with, and I know that. And like they had a lot of rough times, and somehow even with that, like she went to work every single day, was leaving at six in the morning, coming back at night, still cooking dinner, dealing with all the bills. Um, and, you know, went back to school while she was raising us. Uh, you know, my dad always had health issues as well. He was, you know, a pretty heavy guy. And I, it can make me cry, you know, honestly, just thinking about like how much my mom sacrificed of like what maybe our bigger goals would have been like to maybe own a restaurant, all these things, just to make sure me and my brother were good and never felt like we needed anything. So, you know, I think about how hard I've worked and it's literally a quarter of what my mother has done like on this earth, like, you know, grinded from being a person who was just a regular nurse to being the vice president of uh, nursing at uh, my mom, wow, at Mamamides in Brooklyn. I might have to cut that out, but. <laughs> and now we're keeping that in. Like yeah, that keeping wrong, that in, yeah, get that raw, get the raw footage. So do you think, you know, what you battled with, like externally and internally, when you really did become, I guess, enticed by video games, it was definitely a form of escapism, like something yeah, that absolutely. you did to feel better. Yeah, I, I, I felt like video games, especially that it was like not online play back then, is, you know, kind of dating myself a little bit. You know, it would just be me and my brother or most of the time just be by, me by myself. And I knew that my dad wasn't there, the people at school weren't there, my teachers weren't, no, my coaches, all the people who just, I felt like were on top of me at all times, trying to hold me accountable for every little thing, micromanaging, nitpicking. You know, it, it, it kind of just went away when I got onto a video game, you know, and I always loved sports games because I always played sports. So I would get all my homework done, rush through, make stuff up to tell my dad I did it right. And he couldn't, you know, he wasn't really sure either. So I would get through just to play video games, stay up super late, get in trouble playing video games because again, you're right, escapism. It was my release, you know, it was my way, my catharsis, my way at that time to cope with just feeling like I had no control in my life over anything that I was doing.